Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another FIFA 22 video where today we are going to be going through this very formation right here. It is the 5-2-1-2 and why I think this formation is absolutely unbeatable. So on the right hand side you can see the uh, the team that we are using and yesterday I had this 5-2-1-2 in the draft and I absolutely spanked and smoked everybody in the draft, got through it in about 20 minutes and uh, managed to get another draft win. So this formation for me is just amazing. Now it's partly due to the formation being exceptionally good, partly due to the fact that I've used it for so long. So I know how to get the best out of it, I know what works and I've got a system that works for me. Now when we go to the instructions, we're going to the goalkeeper first obviously. Van der Sar on comes across his ant sweeper keeper. Now the fullbacks I've been playing around with a little bit. I've ex been, been experimenting a little bit more on stay back while attacking. A little bit on join the attack. And this really depends on the type of opponent you're playing. If you're playing somebody, and this is where it, it, you can't really change it on the fly. You kind of have to pick one or the other. Because whilst you can change it for your opponent, you know, if you're playing a game, maybe you get to half time, you feel like you can change things. But... If you're playing someone who you're better than, if you're playing someone who likes an open game, is playing quite open, you can get away with playing on join the attack. You can get away with this. Now, if you're playing somebody who's super defensive, it's becoming a little bit more often, I would say, in, in this version of FIFA. you are getting a lot more people playing defensive and just playing on the counter with chip through walls and things like that. Stay back while attacking can work. For me, I keep my fullbacks on balance. I find this works so well. I know this works exceptionally well. Um, it just having that width and having that ball on the outside. The problem with when you have these guys on stay back while attacking is attacking becomes quite predictable in this formation because if you just attack with the two strikers, cams and the two mids, whenever you get the ball, you have to pass the ball on the inside. So your opponent starts just covering the inside passing lanes all the time. Whereas when Florenzi and Moreno get forwards, um, you have obviously that option to pass outside. So your opponent doesn't press you, doesn't cover a passing lane because if he covers the inside, you have an easy pass to the outside. So uh, having that extra body going forwards makes attacking a lot more unpredictable. And as we said in many videos, more unpredictable attacking means more opportunities to score goals. In terms of the two mids, we've got Cantona and Vieira. Now Cantona is, for me, he's absolutely shocking. I can't wait to get Cantona out of my team. He's so bad. In terms of these two mids, we've got them on balance. We've got them on stay on edge of the box because we don't want these guys on balance crossing ones. I don't want these guys to get into the box. Their main job isn't to score. It's kind of more to, to stop those counter-attacks. So I want them to stay outside the box so that they're ready to potentially stop uh, any counter-attacks. They're in a good position to track back and get into a good position to potentially break up any counter-attacks. So the job of these two midfielders is generally to do that. What I tend to do personally is I tend to just switch Kante back into the midfield and I take Cantona off and I bring on like a, a, another centre ball like Kunde or something, bring him on and uh, get Cantona off the pitch. So naturally, you want to have two proper um, box-to-box -box type midfielders in here, but generally you'd want maybe more defensive-minded midfielders because these guys never really get into attacking positions. They generally just stay in those sort of protective roles. In terms of Messi or that central cam, obviously you get into the box and free roam, pretty much the standard stuff. The one thing I have found with free roam, and this is something you may want to bear in mind, and you may want to actually keep him on stick to position. Um, one thing I found with the free roam, he tends to drift out a lot to sort of the left centre midfield position, which is a bit bizarre. Um, I found a lot of the time as well, he can sometimes, he drops all the way down to get the ball off the centre backs and then he moves up the pitch which is that that second part's what you want you want him to drift and attract runners because then it's going to allow you more time on the ball but sometimes he does get in some really odd positions like like I said a lot of the time he's either dropping in to get the ball off the back three or for some reason he's he's like wide left and I don't know if that's obviously an issue with the game so if you don't like that or that element that he drifts you can leave him on, on stick to position but I find that whilst that there that is a little negative with the free roam, generally there are more upsides to him on free roam. He drifts in sometimes beyond the strikers. He does get plenty of goals, but he does provide a lot of assists and he's the link up between the mids and the strikers. So there is a little downside with some maybe the way it's coded, but there's also a lot of upside to this playstyle. In terms of the two strikers, we've got Ronaldo, uh, managed to Ronaldo out of that 85 by 3 pack the other day, so I was well chuffed about that. Got Ronaldo on stay central, getting behind, same with Pulisic. The main reason for these guys being on stay central, because we have the width from Moreno and Florenzi, 
we need these guys on stay central. If you choose to have the fullbacks on stay back while attacking, then I'd recommend switching these two strikers to balanced width because, again, you do need to have some width, and that width is either going to come from your strikers or your wingers. I prefer to have the width from the from the wing backs and have the two strikers on stay central because their job is to score goals, so I don't want them drifting out of position. Now, in terms of the tactics, we have changed things a little bit. We are still playing on defensive style, so we haven't changed that. The press still does not work in this formation, and I wouldn't recommend it. In terms of the defensive width, I'm playing on around about 40 at the moment. I find this works very, very well. Um, even though I do have the fullbacks going forwards, I would still much rather my formation be a bit narrower in the midfield uh, and obviously with the back three and when the five is there. And I'd rather have my opponent have space out wide. Because one thing I have noticed recently is there have been a few too many gaps for my liking through the midfield. So I've just tightened up that, that midfield. So we got 40 on the uh, defensive width. <clears throat> In terms of the depth, I'm playing on 65 at the moment. I'm liking how, how it's feeling. I'm feeling in a good flow at the moment with Viva. And obviously, when your confidence is up, when you're playing well, you feel like playing a little bit more attacking, a little bit more aggressive. So at the moment, I'm playing on 65. I'm still dominating games, so I find that that's a good depth to play on. Um, naturally, as well, we have a lot of possession. So you know, playing on a higher depth just allows us to retain those attacks quite well. In terms of the build-up play, I'm personally still playing on build-up. However, I have been experimenting with long ball in this formation, and this is very, very effective. Um, at the moment, it's effective because obviously the chip-through balls are quite effective. So if you're someone who plays lots of the chip-through ball over the top balls, long ball would work in this build-up play uh, as long as you play that play style. I've experimented with it, and it works, but it's not my main play style. So I still, I personally still play on slow build-up. But I'm just saying, if you are the, the sort of person who does like to play a lot of those chip-through balls, then I'd, I would switch to uh, long ball. But if you're someone who likes to dominate possession like me, you like to have more of the ball, then I'd recommend staying on slow build-up. In terms of chance creation, we are playing on possession. Now, for me, I've had it on direct passing the last couple of weeks, and whilst I was having lots of chances, creating lots of opportunities, I found that it was leaving me far too open with the little tweaks and changes we've made to the instructions and whatnot. I was finding that I was left a little bit too open. So I decided to switch to possession so I could dominate more of the ball. It did mean that my players weren't making as many runs in behind, but I've adapted the way I play the game. So I'm more controlled in possession. I just let the attacks develop naturally. Um, so obviously playing to the strength of the possession. So I'm having more of the ball and working my opportunities a lot more. I'm not really relying on so many AI runs in behind. I'm kind of doing it a lot more myself. And I find the possession is a lot more effective. In terms of the width, we're still playing on 100. We're still obviously... Because if, you, if you're getting those fullbacks forwards, then you need to play the width on 100. Because the, the wingbacks obviously are providing all the width in the formation. If you're playing on stay back while attacking and you're not playing with the wing backs going forward, I'd recommend having your width only on about 60. You still need to have some width in this formation when you are attacking, hence why it needs to be a little bit wider in the offense than the defense. So it really depends if you're playing uh, with your fullbacks on stay back, I'd have them on 60. If you're playing with your fullbacks going forward like me, then I'd recommend having them on 100. In terms of players in the box, we are going to be on around about six, just having enough players in the box because... We want to have more more players getting in there, obviously getting uh, and finishing off the end of our chances. So it means that obviously mainly the front three this is, it's not going to push the midfielders. The midfielders are still going to stay on the edge of the box. That's the key thing to know. And then corners, we are on one because they seem to be patching that new corner routine. So we're not going to be having uh, three on the corners anymore. So it's going to mean we're a little bit more secure on counterattacks, which seems to be a bit more popular in the game this year. But that is it for the 5-2-1-2. This is absolutely amazing, this formation. For me personally, my favourite formation in the game this year. I think it's absolutely brilliant. I think it's, for me, it's unbeatable. I seem to win 90% of my games, so it's just absolutely amazing. Have lots of fun playing this formation, so I'd absolutely recommend you try it. And uh, if you do have any questions, let me know down in the comment section. Make sure you drop a thumbs up and subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. But that's all for today, guys. Have an awesome day. I'm out.